Hey, how's it going? Uh, Don here, and I am currently in Playa del Carmen. Been here for a couple days now, and uh, been exploring a little bit, uh, doing some work as well, and also um, eating a lot of tacos and working out. So, uh, what I wanted to do is come on here and uh, kind of share my experience with you on the whole travel to Mexico process. Uh, post-pandemic. I'll call it post-pandemic just because now the world's starting to open up a little bit more. Uh, people are able to travel and going to start traveling. And so for those of you looking to come to Mexico, I want to be able to just share with you my experience as I went through the airport. So as you know, coming from Canada, the first thing that you need now uh, when you're traveling is to be fully vaxxed. Um, I think up until November 30th, if you're not fully vaxxed, you can provide a negative PCR test within 72 hours. Uh, but starting from November 30th, you got to be fully vaxxed to get on an airplane. So luckily for me, I'm fully vaxxed, so I didn't have to worry about that. Now, the whole check-in process at the airport and getting to the airport was pretty much the same as, as normal. Uh, I checked in 24 hours before my flight. Uh, gave me my confirmation uh, when I got to the airport I went to the uh, counter uh, the kiosk and checked in uh, got my bag tags and uh, my boarding pass and during that whole process the only part that uh, the verification that they do for the COVID uh, vaccine is just the declaration that you sign um, and say that you agree that you're fully vaxxed pretty much so after I did that and checked in my bags oh, the other thing too with these uh, self um, these kiosks now is that if your bag is overweight by even 0.1 uh, kilograms then the machine's not going to take your bag so make sure you weigh your bags uh, before you come or uh, when you get there their scales but uh, for me it was 23 kilograms my bag was 23.1 and uh, it wouldn't take it so I had to take out my little portable Bluetooth speaker and then the weight went down to 22.9 uh, and it took it so just make sure that you are careful of that when you're packing your bags uh, so after uh, after that whole process there then you got to go through security uh, the line to get into security was a little bit long uh, so depending on what time you're getting to the airport it might be a little bit longer so I would say uh, they, they say what two and a half hours to three hours for international flights I would make sure that you get to the airport uh, pretty early um, that way you can go through security and do all that and then get inside and um, for me personally I'd rather have extra time inside to sit down have a coffee or grab breakfast um, or have a drink if you want than to be rushing in and standing in the security line, uh, sweating because you're almost late for your flight and the lineup is, is long or there's issues there. So, um, and in my case, it took a bit longer because I had a bunch of electronics and so they had to put it through the x-ray machine or the scanner uh, two or three times. So just um, get to the airport early and, and relax. So security, before you go in, uh, there was the person at the front there, uh, so I thought she might be asking for vaccine passports. And um, she asked the couple ahead of me to show her one of their vaccine passports. And then um, when it came to my turn, she just let me right through. So uh, two, I guess the check-in and security, uh, I had my vaccine port passport ready, but uh, they never asked for it. So went in, uh, security line, after you kind of do the first check-in was pretty long as well too. So I probably sat in line for maybe 30 minutes before I was able to uh, get through. And so I thought, okay, well maybe they'll check the vaccine passport before you board. Um, but that's not the case, you just go through. So for me, uh, if, even if I wasn't vaxxed, I probably could have got on the airplane um, with no issues. So I don't know how they're how they're enforcing or, or policing that but I'm sure that'll change as I don't know more staff come as they get more staff or um, as I'm sure people will figure out a way to cheat the system and then they'll they'll change things at that time so um, and then after that it's pretty smooth sailing to get into Mexico uh, you get on the airplane it's a four four hour ish airplane ride 
Uh, during the airplane ride, you'll get your immigration form and your customs declaration form, uh, which is normal when you're going to any country. Now, the one thing that's different with the Mexican uh, immigration form is you have to fill out a top part and a bottom part. There's two spots that you have to fill out. Many people sometimes only fill out the top and they forget to fill out the bottom and then once they get to immigration, they get sent back because they have to fill it out. So uh, make sure you fill out the top and the bottom. Uh, when you go through immigration, they'll take uh, the top part and give you the bottom. And that bottom part is really important because you need to you have to give that back when you leave the country. So uh, I almost made this mistake before and almost threw it away, but I didn't, and luckily I didn't. Uh, I talked to somebody else uh, in, their, in the airport and, and they said that they had thrown it out once a long time ago and um, they had to pay cash in order to go through the whole process and they didn't have cash and uh, they're running around the airport trying to find an ATM and, and they're trying to board their flight. So, Make sure you keep that bottom part and don't throw don't throw it away. Um, so yeah, just the, the lineup going through immigration was as, was long as well too. We had a full plane plus I believe there was another plane that landed uh, just before us. So that's another that took another hour ish. Um, and then once you go in, then you got to wait for your bag. So that's another uh, process. So if you're able to go only carry on, I would recommend it just because you save the time from waiting. But um, I'm sure some people if they don't have carry-on then or they have checked bags you just gotta wait for your bags to uh, come through uh, after that you go out uh, and it's the customs declaration they pretty much just ask you if you have anything to declare uh, for me I said no and she just let me right through so uh, that could change for I don't know depending on the on people but um, it didn't seem like they were checking people um, very often so and then once you go through that, you're pretty much in Mexico and you're good to go. So once you go through there, um, you're gonna be walking out and they always say, even on the airplane and um, other things, before you get to the, like, the last exit doors of the airport, you're gonna, be, you're gonna go to an area where uh, there's a lot of people trying to sell you timeshares. So just go past, ignore them, because uh, they'll, you know they're, they're they're good sellers so they'll try to start conversation with you and then get you sucked in so just ignore them um, but I guess kind of going back a little bit here is uh, transportation uh, from Cancun Airport uh, if you're staying at a resort then most likely you'll have transportation arranged uh, from your hotel or from your resort so uh, you just have to go out through the exits and then keep walking out and uh, there's a bunch of people with signs and you'll be able to find um, your your transportation. I believe they, they'll probably let you know in advance like which platform to go to, so that way it's easier to find. Uh, for me, I had um, ordered a private transport from the airport to Playa. Um, was planning to take the bus originally, and that would have been, I think, 12 US dollars, but um, I just thought getting in at night, and I'd, re I'd rather just go from the airport straight to my Airbnb uh, so I paid uh, worked out to round trip 110 US dollars so I do have transportation uh, when I go back to the airport as well too so uh, and luckily you know whether you have one person or a couple people it's your own vehicle so I had my own vehicle so I wasn't sharing with anybody else um, so I think I believe if you have more people then you can spread that cost out a little bit more um, probably wouldn't recommend taking a taxi just because it's more expensive so uh, book it in advance and then that way you don't have to deal with the you know the, the craziness at the airport um, yeah and then once you come out there's there's a bar outside um, I decided to grab a margarita because our flight was delayed an hour and a half and I just got to Mexico and uh, I just wanted to one of the, the first things I wanted to do coming to Mexico was to have a margarita so I went uh, to the bar and I'm sure if you know uh, at the airport things are always overpriced ordered a margarita gave them my card and uh, later I checked it was a $32 margarita but um, it was vacation sized and and it was good so that's pretty much the whole process of coming to Mexico um, like I said it's pretty simple uh, the only, I guess, expense that you have to think about when coming to Mexico is the PCR test uh, going back. But uh, I'll go into that um, in a different video. 
uh, and uh, I'll show you the whole process of uh, me going through the PCR test when I go home. But uh, if you're thinking about coming to Mexico and you're worried about the whole process of international travel, trust me, it's pretty, it's very easy, uh, very simple. And uh, once you get down here, you're not going to regret it because you'll be sitting out in the sun. Uh, weather is awesome right now and uh, drinking your margaritas or for me having my beer right now sitting by the pool and uh, you'll have a lot of fun so hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you guys in the next one